Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And I have as my guest today, good friend, Andrew DeFranzo. And Andrew is the executive director of the Harbor Light Community Partners. Andrew, welcome. Thanks, Walt. Thanks for having me. Well, you're certainly welcome. And um, uh, for those of our viewers who don't know, and I, I, I expect there might be some of those, uh, give us a little overview of Harbor Light Community Partners. What do you guys do? What's your mission, uh, et cetera? Sure. Thanks. Yeah, Harbor Light Community Partners uh, is a local nonprofit headquartered in Beverly. Um, we've been around for a little more than 50 years. We were started by the First Baptist Church downtown, um, who still is uh, involved in the Harbor Light work. We do really four things. We develop affordable housing, so we do all the things that require development, permitting, financing, a lot of community organizing um, to create new units uh, or new, new housing home, new homes for people that need them all around the region. Um, we manage those uh, housing uh, units over time, uh, so we're the property manager for all of the stuff that we create and sometimes for other people. Um, we do some pretty interesting uh, supportive service work uh, with the different buildings, particularly when we're housing a really vulnerable population, like formerly homeless individuals or in the middle of COVID, we have a lot of supportive elderly housing. And so we have partnerships with various groups um, to create services at the sites that help maintain people's independence and quality of life. And the fourth thing that we do really is advocacy and education uh, to try to encourage communities at the municipal level uh, and at the state level to have housing friendly policies for our workforce, our seniors, people with disabilities. So we really view ourselves as a, as a local nonprofit for the region. We work north of Boston, south of New Hampshire, and we're involved in our footprints about 22 communities and we're involved in about 11 of those 22 in one way or the other. And our purpose is to continue to make space for people who would otherwise be excluded based on the type of jobs they do, the incomes they have, uh, or race as an overlay with income. Uh, we wanna make sure that there's housing for everybody in the region. So that's what we do. Yeah, well, that, that's a very comprehensive uh, workload. Sometimes I wonder how you get it done. Now, I, someone would ask, where do you get your money, Andrew? Yeah, well, it's, you know, we would take it sort of from anywhere that is, uh, is legal, uh, but, uh, we get it from a variety of places. So generally there are three or four streams of revenue. Um, the projects that we manage, that we do the management work for, so plow the snow, fix the faucets, um, staff the buildings, etc. We make uh, fees off of the management of the buildings. Instead of having a third party do that, we, we're in that space. We make some revenue for uh, development projects. So when we close and build a deal, Usually there's an allowable fee if it works out um, that you can get paid at that point. Uh, and then we rely for the rest of it heavily on philanthropy. So philanthropy funds, especially a lot of the augmentation work, philanthropy funds all of the advocacy and education work, a lot of the resident services work. So anything that's sort of above the brass tacks of getting things built and then operating the things that are built, the things that we think really make it good um, and comprehensive and supportive over time so that people can age in place well uh, if they're elderly and people can have opportunities for uh, improvement and improvement of income and improvement of education access for family housing. All of that stuff is really in the philanthropic side. So a big thank you to all our HCP donors out there. Now, do you, do you actually own the buildings? Do you own these projects, Harbor Light? We do. Yeah, we, we sometimes will own them, almost always we own them in a subsidiary. Uh, the financing usually requires that you own them in their own entity. So Harbor Light will, is the parent and there'll be a subsidiary entity that owns whatever the building is. But yeah. So you, you're, you're paying a lot of mortgage money? A lot of mortgage money, a lot of taxes, um, a lot of insurance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A now, lot. <laughs> Given, Andrew, given, given what's been happening here in the last year or so with the COVID epidemic, people losing their jobs, people uh, not being able to pay rent, and we've heard about the <clears throat> evictions that are going on. Tell us specifically in our area here, what, what, is, what is the current need for, for housing, especially with people with lower, lower means? 
Yeah, the need for housing pre-COVID and currently is, is extensive. And largely that's because we have major sectors of our population um, that can't afford the market cost of the housing that exists or that's being produced. It's really a math problem brought on by a variety of factors, including the cost of land, which is really a result of uh, discriminatory zoning practices, in our opinion, uh, the cost of construction, which is really high, particularly on the supply side right now. So the cost of wood, the cost of steel, um, based on the current uh, supply side. So things like appliances, um, much more expensive. Um, insurance costs, much more expensive. So the need though is substantial in that everybody who's working a job that doesn't make X, right? That can, that can meet the market demand, the market level cost is having a truck is having trouble and needs some place to live where the cost can match their means. Right. So tenders, your cooks, uh, your landscapers, some of your construction workers, daycare workers, home health aides, all of the grocery store workers. So all of these people who are doing now what we've said is essential work, right? We broaden this line of essentiality and we said the checkout people and the people stocking grocery stores are essential. Even we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna make sure that they get vaccines and they're supported, et cetera. Well, those people, if they're making 14 or $15 an hour, um, they're essential to the rest to everybody's survival, but they can't afford to pay rent on that number. So really anybody in that income bracket uh, doing jobs that don't meet market rate and anybody who's um, has an otherwise a challenge, seniors, people with disabilities. So that whole swath of the population, if you aggregate it, um, we used to have the ability where we had housing of different types across the spectrum. But now really the, the things that are getting built now, unless they're intentionally getting built to meet those needs are really only at the highest end um, because the cost of construction and the cost of land cost of permitting is so high. And so developers are meeting that end because that's where they can make money, which is understandable. That's where the bucks are, yeah. Now let's let's talk a little bit more specifically about this project that that is uh, uh, that you're involved in uh, called Anchor Point. It's in the city of Beverly. So uh, uh, locate that for us geographically, Andrew. Yeah, it's right, especially for, for folks that are, that are local. This is right at the V between Sawyer and Tozier just up from the solar fields. Right. So you go high school, solar fields, and there's that V in the land. So people who remember when North Shore Community College used to be where the consortium is, this is on the parking lot of what was for North Shore Community College. <laughs> and I, I've been taking, uh, during, during the big snowstorm, I was taking my dogs up there for, for little walks. It was <laughs> the only place I could find. Anyway, so this is a pie-shaped lot there, and it, it's uh, right at the top of the hill, if you will, yep. overlooking the solar field. And, and, and now how, how big, how much area do you have there? Yeah, we have about five acres there. Um, and so like you said, it is in a wedge shape, but it's a pretty big site. Uh, we are given some of the site to the city, who thankfully got, um, the, right at the point, the city got some funding from MassWorks to, to improve that intersection for pedestrian accents and traffic. And so we're, we're giving some of that land back to the city to improve that intersection. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that. The, the, the mass were, I think it's what, one, one and three quarter million dollars that the city got through MassWorks for right. that intersection. And I think MassWorks, they, 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 they donate or give grants uh, for job creating and housing creating projects. So right. now is that gonna, that's gonna happen first before you start doing any stuff or is, is it gonna be concurrently or, or how's that gonna happen? Yeah, I don't know that yet. I assume it will, they're going to have their own timeline, but certainly the work will be coordinated so that there's not redundancy and, um, but I don't know if it'll be sequenced or concurrent, uh, but it's really going to be very helpful because it'll make pedestrian access to the high school much easier and safer for kids that are in that space. Yeah. So quite a lot of job opportunities. If you go north up Sawyer and Tozier, you know, all the way to Whole Foods on the one side, and really to Shaw's on the other side, um, there's a lot of both uh, industry and retail there. So our hope is that people who live in our building, part of the job is to improve sidewalk uh, continuity and that that will make it easier for people to walk to employment. Yeah, yeah. Now, now what, did I ask you, what, what is the size of that plot there? That uh, It's about five acres. About five acres. And I know you're planning uh, a number of units uh, uh, and then you're also planning some units for homeless. T tell us how many units you're planning and how are you allocating those? 
Yeah, so it's a 77 unit um, deal. Uh, it'll be in two phases. So the first about half and a half, so 39 and one and 38 and the other. So we'll break ground this spring on phase one. So there's two, there's two separate buildings. Part of that is there's an easement uh, for a water line up there. Um, and so the buildings will be split so that the easement will be in the middle. Um, there'll be some connectivity overhead, uh, but we had to respect that land, that land use issue. Uh, and so the buildings are two different buildings. So phase one will be 38 units. 20% um, of the units are set aside for formerly homeless families, so about 15 of them, uh, and that'll be split evenly into each phase, and there'll be supportive services, so social worker on site to support those families in their um, reentry into independence, as well as a lot of services on site just generally for the kids that are there, so outdoor play spaces, activities, we're hoping uh, that we're going to be able to have a, a daycare essentially on site with our staff by our friends at the YMCA and some services on site from our friends at Beverly Bootstraps and others so that we can infuse the site with resources families might want access to uh, so that they can determine their own future based on those resources. Right, right. Now, are, do you do you currently own the land or, or are you, you, you are we the do. owner now? We are the owner, yep. You are the owner of the land right yeah. now. Yeah, we bought the land a couple of years ago. And, uh, uh, and you say construction will be starting this this spring? On the first phase, yeah. And then there'll be a pause because we just, the state awarded uh, a huge chunk of money for phase one. Uh, we'll build that phase and then we'll go back again and ask for funding for the next phase. The city also, you know, was tremendous in both rezoning the land as a 40 yard district, which also has benefits for the city in various ways, funding ways, uh, both yeah. school system and generally. Um, and they also put in CPA funds and affordable housing trust funds and home funds. So they put in a substantial amount of money into the project in addition to rezoning the land, which was amazing and wonderful. Yeah. Now, what, what, kind, of, what kind of units will these have? One bedroom, two bedroom, what, what, what are we gonna see there? Yeah, these are all twos and threes. Uh, so no one bedrooms, these are all two and three bedroom units. As I said, there'll be common area inside the building. We are hoping to build a third building that would be the Anchor Point uh, Wellness and Community Center. That would be uh, a building to the side that would house spaces, like I mentioned, where we could have this uh, daycare program, some after school programming, adult education in the evenings, um, commercial kitchen for cooking classes, and uh, as well as community garden space outside and some recreational spaces for different ages of kids. So basketball and playgrounds and that sort of thing. Um, but that part of the project, that third phase is all philanthropic. So we're raising about $5 million for um, those augmentations. The state paid for the housing. Um, so the two housing buildings the state will pay for, but philanthropically we're raising money for the balance of it. Yeah. Now, uh, we, we, we already noted that the need exceeds the supply. Mm -hmm. So how, how are you gonna apportion these? How, how, uh, what, what kind of process are you going to use to, to determine who gets these units and so forth? Yeah, it's pretty prescriptive. Well, actually, so the state has a, has a process they call the affirmative fair housing marketing process. The long words, but anyway, they, so they monitor it. So you have to give them your plan for this and you have to market it in all different areas. And then uh, there's a period of time where you take applications and then a lottery. Thank you for all of the wonderful work which our community partners does for the city and for the population, of our population and the other population in this area. And we thank you for being my guest today. And uh, I want to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.